Hello. Today I would like to continue with my movies about your stability of ships. And after uh, the first introduction movies, today it's time to talk about the pull-out test maneuver. Uh, this is a maneuver for a fast identification of the yaw stability. And in this movie I will use uh, some samples of stable and unstable ships and um, present the results and also talk about the so-called Lüster diagram. After my last movie I get some hints that there might be uh, a, a chance to talk about the Lüster diagram. And so I did. Today, for this topic, I would like to first present some things which will, which will be unique and it should be also uh, shown what is of importance. So the first to start is to show the procedures of the pull-out test maneuver uh, and the typical results. Uh, second, I will compare the um, pull-out test maneuver with the spiral test diagram, which I showed last time, and uh, to compare it with the um, time history of the pull-out maneuver. Then I will talk about the so-called effect uh, of the neutral rudder angle. And also I would like to show what happens if I go not ahead, I go astern with my vessel. And finally, I would point out the Lister diagram, but the conclusion will be shown by using not a big ship, but a rowing boat together with my son. This is the plan for today. So the first is to describe the procedure, how to do such a pull-out maneuver. The standard procedure is to steer the ship by a large rudder angle. For instance, here I'm using a full rudder uh, into a turning circle. When the ship has reached a steady state turning motion uh, with constant rate of turn and speed, then the rudder should be put midships. And then you see that after the turning motion, the turning motion stops and the ship goes, I don't know, on a straight track or continuous turning, we will see. Important is we have to measure the final rate of turn. So here in this case, it's nearly zero. Very important, the procedure is to be repeated from counter rudder. So Beginning with a maybe starboard turning circle, you should just do the same thing, thing for a port turning circle. And I would like to point out also that in some cases, instead of rather midships here in this situation, it might be better to use a neutral rudder angle to really steer the ship on a straight track, if it does. The results I will describe by uh, two uh, samples. First for uh, st a stable ship, your stable ship, and secondly for an unstable ship. And I will do these demonstrations by using our wonderful Salmon planning tool. And the sample ship today will be uh, some cruise ships. So here we are using the uh, Salmon planning tool and uh, I have loaded already a cruise ship Aida Blue and the ship is uh, position is just here. The ship is proceeding with full ahead 22 knots and still the rudder is amidships. So the first is to use the rudder for 35 degrees. So this is full rudder and then we proceed with our ship uh, up to a certain uh, position. For instance, uh, as I did here, so it's nearly going, uh, the heading is just uh, to north. Uh, and here I will put the rudder in midship. So I add a maneuvering point and then I remove the rudder to a midship, to zero degree. So the result will be 
the ship will very fast uh, decrease the turning rate and goes on a straight track if we want to see how it's uh, moving. So we see the ship is just here, um, the rate of turn is nearly zero uh, and the speed has already recovered uh, to the full speed ahead. Uh, I set a maneuvering point here and then the maneuver is to be repeated to the other side. So I go back here with the fast time simulation we can do it very fast. I only go into the edit mode then we are at the first position and instead of having the rudder plus 35 degrees I change the rudder now to minus 35 that means to midship so it's now 20 uh, so this is roughly 35 degrees. It's not fully, but uh, it doesn't matter. I will explain. Um, so the consequence will be the ship will be turned to port side. And if we put the rudder midship, then again, the ship is, as we can see it here, uh, at this position, the rate of turn is nearly zero. So this is the final result. The result is that from port turning and also from the previous starboard turning, the ship ends up in the same uh, turning condition going straight with rudder midship. So this is obviously a stable vessel. Now we are loading uh, another vessel. So this is now the Costa Fortuna in the same uh, initial condition, full ahead, 20 three knots and um, the ship goes straight with rudder midship is a two propeller vessel and then we go for 35 degrees so now it's full rudder 35 degrees and again we go onto a certain position um, let's say this and there we again Put the rudder amidship, so the ship is full turning. Now we put the rudder amidship, and the result for this ship will be it will continue with its turning speed. So if I uh, want to take a reference, then we see around here, let's say here, the turning speed is 20. Uh, degrees per minute. So it's a substantial um, turning speed. <coughs> I will add a maneuvering point here for our reference. So the turning speed is uh, very high and now we do repeat the maneuver to the other side. I again go back to the initial position. This is here and instead of rather full to Starboard, I switch the rudder now to port side. So now it's 35 degrees to port side. And what we see is uh, also here the ship is turning, but if the rudder is set to a midship, then the ship continues turning, but this time to the other side. So obviously, we have here now an unstable vessel. By the way, the advantage of this maneuver is you don't have to really go for the full turning circle. It's only to set the ship into the steady state turning condition. If I uh, would um, maybe it would also be fine to use only a half turning circle or even up to this condition. So now this is too less. It should be a continuous steady state turning. So maybe only a half turning circle would be enough. And then you see the results as you might need it. So this would be uh, the same result without performing a full turning circle. So now we go back to the discussion. To explain and to compare the maneuver, I would like to show the comparison between the spiral test result and the pull-out maneuver. On the left side in the spiral test we have um, the uh, coordinate system where we have here the rudder angle 
and here the rate of turn. This is what we described last time in the last movie. And we have two sh ships. One is for stable conditions and this one is for unstable conditions. So the, un the range of unstability is here this red, red marked area. And here we have the situation for a pull-out maneuver. So from a turning circle we put the rudder amidship. So as a turning circle we start for instance with the stable ship, this one here. So for rudder 35 degree to port, this was our first maneuver, we have initially this rate of turn. And if we put the rudder amidship then the rate of turn decreases and it will remain at a constant turning rate. In our case it was even zero. The ship was going straight uh, because here we have the situation that uh, for this ship we have a certain rudder angle of neutral effect. So that means due to the pedal wheel effect we need a rudder angle to about three degrees to port side. But uh, so if we do the same maneuver from the other side, for, from port turning, then we start with uh, a, a rate of turn to port and if we put the rudder amidship it will come to the same final rate of turn which is close to zero. If there's a, a shift of this diagram due to the rudder angle of neutral effect then some turning uh, rate uh, remains um, but it will always be the same. If we have an uh, unstable vessel and we start also with the starboard rudder uh, turning, uh, turning circle to starboard, then starting with this rate of turn and we put the rudder amidship then the rate of turn will go down but it remains a certain rate of turn. If we do the same maneuver from the port side, so we start with this rate of turn for 35 degrees to port, we start with this turning rate, if we move the rudder to midship then this rate of turn remains. So what we see, the rate of turn, the rate of turn is uh, different to one side or to the other side. Um, the effect of the neutral rudder angle, that means the shift to one or to the other side to keep the ship straight, um, ends up in a certain shift of these graphs here in this direction. So if we have a rudder angle of neutral effect, then a certain, for rudder midships, a certain rate of turn remains. And uh, for the unstable vessel it's also a little bit shifted, so this uh, rate of turn is a little bit larger than this rate of turn. But this is the, uh, how to say, the characteristic comparing spiro test with the pull-out maneuver. But there might be some problems in using midship if you have larger angles of neutral effect. <clears throat> so you can imagine if this red graph is moved more to the uh, left side uh, then there will be no crossing here anymore. And then only one rate of turn remains. And I will show you the sample using the Patriot a tanker. So this is now the tanker Patriot and what we see is for rudder midship the ship is slightly turning to port side. So we need a certain counter rudder to stabilize the ship on straight track. So I will do that here. So I increase the rudder angle. This is now 1.4 so it's uh, very sensitive. 1.6 one seven, so it, it nearly goes on a straight track, but you see if we only increase the rudder by one digit, so, so one, 0 0.1 degree, then the ship is turning to another side, to the other side. So it might be an unstable vessel, what we clearly see already from this experiment. 
Uh, so the rudder angle of neutral effect is around 1.7 degree. Um, but still the ship is starting turning at a certain uh, time. But anyhow we want to check out the pull out maneuver. First we start to port side in this case. So we go to full to port. So this is our rudder, uh, our turning circle. And we move the ship a little bit ahead. So uh, roughly to this position. So, uh, and in this case, we put the rudder, no, we set a maneuvering point, and then we switch the rudder to midship. So what we clearly see, okay, the ship is continuing turning, and the final turning rate here, you see here, this is uh, 19, uh, nearly 20 degrees per minute turning. So clearly it's an unstable behavior. Now we go to the other side. So we go back to our first part and we switch the turning to the other side. Um, midship and this is now to starboard. So it's now our turning to starboard and then we go to this position and switch the rudder to midship. And what you see is, okay, the ship is not continuing turning, it even goes to the other side. Why on earth is the ship doing this? Um, we can explain that by means of the spiral test diagram and I will do that in a minute. But before, I would like to change something. I would not switch to rudder midship. I would switch to the new uh, rudder angle of neutral effect. So I would switch to, again, 1.7 degree. So what you clearly see is, okay, now the ship is going into a turning circle to the other side. It's better to use the rudder angle of neutral effect for ships which has a pronounced rudder angle of neutral effect. Uh, if I might remember uh, you to the picture I had already shown during the demonstration of the spiral test, we had shown this was the spiral test for this Patriot tanker. And what you clearly see is for rudder amidship, this is zero here, there's only one condition with around 20 degrees turning rate per minute to one side. So if you use the pull out maneuver with midship, then you always got one final result and it might be a misinterpretation that to think, okay, this ship is uh, stable. It is not. So better is to use the pull-out maneuver around the uh, angle of neutral effect, which is here about 2 degrees, 1.7 we really pointed out. Okay. Whereas the last sample was for the tanker in laden condition on even keel, this sample is for the same ship in ballast condition uh, with stern trim, as you see here, and the focus will now be on the difference of your stability going ahead or going astern. To indicate what we are heading for, here on the left side there is the pull-out maneuver for the ship going ahead, and so it's stable. And if the ship is going astern, so this is here starting into a turning circle, and we do so the same pull-out maneuver as before, the ship will be unstable. And I will show you this sample using the salmon planning tool. So here we are. This is the tanker Patrick now in ballast condition. And you see here, this is the pull-out maneuver and the ship is going on a straight track after putting the rudder amidship. So there's a slight uh, 
neutral rudder angle uh, because the rate of turn is about 1.5 degree uh, to the port side. If we change now the <coughs> turning direction at the beginning, so we go now to harder port in the beginning, then we see, okay, this is a turning circle and switching the rudder midship, we will end up in, we will end up in a turning of the same value, 1.5 degree to port side. So obviously this is a stable vessel. Uh, and now we want to go astern with this vessel. So um, we start at our initial conditions here, but instead of going instead of going ahead, now we go astern. So this is now, as you see, the ship is going on a turning circle uh, to, in this case, to the port side because the rudder is at port. Uh, however, here the ship makes a strange motion, and I can tell you why because at that position still we are going ahead. So we also have to go astern. So this is the final result. So the ship starts in a turning circle and if we move the rudder to the uh, midship position then we see the ship is continuing turning. And the final turning rate here is a 22 uh, degree per minute. So now we want to see what happens if we turn to the other side in the beginning. So we go from harder port, we go to harder starboard. And then we see, okay, first the ship is turning to the starboard side. And then here, putting the rudder amidship, we will end up at a final turning rate, we can see it here, at a final turning rate of, yeah, around 20 degree per minute. So obviously the ship is unstable in a stern motion and we can understand it because if the ship with the stern trim were going ahead, we had a lot of damping forces to bring it in a straight motion back if you put the rudder midship. However, if we go astern, then the stern goes first and uh, this means the damping forces at the bow, now at the aft part of the uh, vessel, uh, has no damping uh, forces sufficiently anymore, so the ship is heavily unstable. We even had made the experiences during a shipyard trial test for a freighter which is going astern, heavily uh, with stern trim, uh, he went into a turning circle and even with counter rudder he could not go out of this turning circle. And when the ship repeated the test, this time the ship went first into a, a starboard turning circle and it was without any chance with counter rudder to get her into any changes of the direction. That means in the spiral test the loop width is wider than the hard rudder um, action would be. Okay, this is the final part of our discussion of pull-out tests and I will try to make a comparison and draw some conclusions about the uh, advantage of spiral test or pull-out maneuver. And here is the, in this table on the left side, the spiral test and here is the pull-out test. First, I like to have a look onto the quality of the results which can be achieved. So the spiral test is uh, very nice to get the full range of the ship turning characteristic due to the rudder. So we could even uh, see where the neutral rudder is due to the pedal wheel effect and we could get the full range of instability, the loop width, uh, if there's an instability. And, uh, even if you want to see the, the inner part of this loop width, there's another test I would, uh, uh, I don't want to show it here. It's a reversed spiral test. So it's a test where instead of putting the rudder and measuring the rate of turn, 
Now, vice versa, you want to achieve a specific rate of turn and you look what rudder angle you need for that one. Well, we will see a rather similar approach <laughs> uh, looking to the uh, Lister gram later. And whereas the pullout test, it has only limited results. You only can see either it is stable or unstable. And for large neutral rudder angles, uh, there might be a potential of misinterpretation if you are using midship as the, uh, as the end of the turning circle. So it's better always to use the neutral rudder instead of a midship. And then with respect to time and space requirements, the spiral test is much more slower. It might take hours with a real vessel and you need a lot of space we even had it in some test trials and other ships were crossing our uh, sea area and then we had to stop the test and that ruins the results. And the, whereas the pull-out test is faster, uh, about half an hour or even less, um, you don't even have to go for a full turning circle, only to wait until steady state motion is reached. And so you need a much more smaller space than with the spiral test, uh, a little more than a turning circle. So another test for the dynamic yaw stability is a zigzag test. This will be in our next movie. But there might also something like a Lister-gram or Lister-diagram, which I will show as a next item. The Listogram. Uh, it's a graphical display of ship steering behavior and your stability. And I picked up this issue thanks to the information from Christopher Barry, which push, pushed me after my last movie about the spiral test. So what is the method? The method is measuring the magnitude and duration of rudder angles just during the course keeping activities. And the results will be plotted in such a, they call it frequency diagram. So what we here see here, here is the rudder angle. And here are the, uh, the frequency, that, me that means how often and how long you used a certain rudder angle. And this will summed up and then you see such a kind of diagram. So what you see here is, this seems to be a directional stable ship because you only need one rudder angle. There's one peak that you always need to steer, in this case, midship. So no rudder angle of neutral effect. And this is the shape how it would look like for an unstable uh, vessel. So there are two peaks uh, which we can see and there's a much wider space, you need more rudder angle to one side or the other side. And this is steered by a an helmsman. And as a comparison, he, um, uh, Mr. Lister, I got the information from a paper in the Naval Architect from January 1976. Um, so, and he also compared helmsman steering versus the autopilot. And what you see is, now it's nearly the same with one exception. Uh, obviously the helmsman, he knew rather midship might be a good, how to say, uh, measure. So he also tried it sometimes, whereas the autopilot only steered uh, port, starboard, port, starboard. Okay, we would like to compare both of these results with the spiral uh, test diagram. So this is a stable ship characteristic and so you see um, the um, main rudder activities would be around midships. This would end up uh, in, a, in a peak in the diagram uh, on the left side, in the listogram. Whereas if you want to keep the course of an unstable vessel, you always need uh, to use larger rudder angles to come out of these spiral loop widths, because here the ship always starts to uh, uh, 
continues turning to the same side. So you need to get out of this uh, diagram. That means uh, if the ship is uh, turning to one side, you need rudder angles to get it out. And uh, or so you see it's uh, this kind of diagram. And then you have to go out of this range to use larger rudder angles. And this was uh, to be seen in this um, in this in the histogram. Um, the effect of the neutral effect. So if you need some rudder angle to steer the ship straight, uh, this can be seen in the following demonstration. So this is the stable and this is the unstable vessel. So if we have a left-handed propeller, this uh, curve goes to the left side. So you need rudder angles to port to stabilize the ship going straight. And in the listogram, the peak would also move to the port side. Um, if we have an unstable vessel, then in this case, the, the center of this uh, if, um, um, listogram would also go to the port side. And uh, if you have right-handed propellers, as we see here, then the focus is going on the right side. And in this case, it would move, the whole shape would move in this direction. And the same would happen with the, um, with the unstable uh, situation that this, the, the center of this shape would go to the right side. So um, now, as a final <laughs> presentation, I would like to tell you a strange story and I compare that with the listogram. Um, I made experiments in a rowing boat. When I was uh, on vacation with our son, okay, it was in the early 70s, in the last century, and my, my son was uh, rowing the boat and he had a lot of problems to keep the, the boat straight. And I was amused that he is not able to do so. And then he said, OK, let's change. The, you take the oars. And so we did. So instead of him, I uh, went into the boat and he wants to be at the, at the bow. But uh, my wife did not allow him alone here. So she also changed to the bow side. So we had a heavy bow trim at that situation. And what happens? The boat starts turning heavily to the starboard side. And I needed all the force on the oar here to steer the ship in, uh, to, to try to keep the ship straight, the boat straight. Uh, this can be compared as if using the rudder full to the port side. So in the listogram, there would be one peak here. And after a while, I managed to rowing with one oar to uh, get the boat straight, but then out of a sudden it turns to the other side. And then I had to use this rudder, this oar to uh, counteract the bar. So in this case, another peak would occur on this side. So finally I said, nah, we should change something. And I asked my wife, could you please change your position to the stern of the boat? And then she said, you are not saying I'm too heavy, are you? And I said, no, 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 no not at all. It's only to look into your beautiful eyes. Um, maybe you could do some magic with your blue eyes uh, that uh, the boat goes straight. And so we did. So both son and wife changed her position. And what happens? The boat went straight. I could use both oars at the same time without any problems. Uh, so that would mean in a listogram it would look like that. What is the result, the conclusion of this? I had some findings and insight. You always have to look for a compromise. This means on one hand for ships. Uh, that means boat ram is good for small resistance only. But if you 
are not able to steer the ship straight, you will ruin your advantages by the steering um, actions. So in a, there's no sustainable effect anymore of the bow trim. So you must have an optimal trim. And for the family, you always look to a compromise. So the first compromise, we allowed our son uh, rowing the boat alone. <laughs> and uh, yeah, for my wife, I did my very best through the last 55 years to, how to say, to stabilize our family. Thank you very much. Uh, I loved to make this movie for you. And you have a, can have a look into the uh, YouTube channel lecturing on basic ship dynamics where I started now the, uh, the series with your stability. Enjoy!